A more serious example of branching recursion, and one that shows somewhat a different style of branching, is the generation of permutations. So assume that you're given a list of items, we'll, we'll play with integers for now, because they're easy to work with, and we want to create all the permutations of that list. And we want to do something with each permutation. Well, you might recall that there is a method in the standard library that generates permutations and gives you back an iterator over those permutations. That's not what we want to do. We don't want to use the library. We want to see how we could write something that does permutations for us. So let's start a file. And we want to define a function. We're just going to call it permute. And it takes in the numbers that we want the permutations of. Okay. A second argument that we're going to pass in is a function that does something with a list of ints. And the reason for this, so we could have this generate all of the permutations and give them all back. But as was described when we talked about the library function, that's not very memory efficient because permutations grow uh, very quickly. There are lots of permutations. And so what we'd rather do is have something that would work with each permutation in turn, but not have to deal with kind of uh, all of them and not store all of them in memory. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a function that just takes a list of int and does something with it. So it list event and returns unit. To help us out, we're going to pass in one other argument. Now, we could hide this inside of a, an inner helper function, but I'm trying to not make this more complex than it needs to be. So I'm going to make one other argument that is a list of ints, and this is the permutation that we built so far. Okay, the way we're going to do this recursively, we're going to take one value at a time and add it to our permutation and build up our permutation list. This is going to do stuff by calling f. It's not going to return anything to us, so the return type is unit. Okay, so what's our base case? Well, it turns out that if all of the numbers have been moved from nums to p, then we're done and p is a permutation and we should act on it. That would be if nums is empty, then we're just going to call f on p. If it's not empty, then we need to generate permutations. And how are we going to do that? Well, what I want to do is I want to go through each element of this list and add it onto that list, okay, one at a time. So I'm not adding, I'm never adding two elements. I'm adding one element, but I'm going to do it with the first element of this and try that with the recursive call. And then I'm going to add it with the second element and do that with the recursive call and the fourth and the fifth, etc. In order to do this, we need to actually walk through this list called nums. Okay. And I'm going to create, in order to do that, we're going to use a while loop, and I'm going to create two vars that will help us out. Okay. One is the values that we have already put into a permutation. I'm calling this before, and it is a list of int, but it starts off empty because we haven't put anything into our permutation yet. I'm going to make another var that's called after. Uh, so I'm kind of partitioning the list that was passed in into two parts, and this is will be kind of a, a constant through here. All the values that were in here will either be part of before or they will be part of after. Well, for that to start off at the beginning, then I have to set after to be all of them to start with. And we're going to keep going while after is not empty. So as long as after isn't empty, that means that we need to test adding a value uh, onto 
the you know the permutation so I'm going to make a rec recursive call here I am going to permute and the list that I'm going to pass in is going to be everything except for the head of our after list so we can say that as before and then I need to append that to after dot tail and because both of those are lists I don't use a normal cons I use a triple colon cons that puts together two lists so I'm going to stick before to everything except for the head of the tail we're going to work with the same function here and we're also need to pass through this P but with one extra element added to it and that extra element is the head of after should be const on to P so that will do a recursive call and we're basically adding the first element of after to our permutation since we've done that when we come back from this we need to move that first element over to before so before cons equals after dot head and we take it off of after after equals after dot tail okay and then we should be done and so we recursively call this and we're building up this list every time with kind of the next element in in order then we move that element to this before list and we shorten the after list by one let's see if this works for us so let's load permutations.scala it compiles looks like we typed things correctly and we're going to permute let's just go with one two three on here the function well I just want to print them out to see what we have and initially we don't have any permutation there there should be six values printed out because there are six different permutations of a list with three elements so we start off with one two three we also have so different permutations three two one two three one three one two one three two one two three our original list is one of the permutations and two one three so that's all the permutations that we have there now remember permutations grow exponentially so if we add one more number to this we get quite a few different outputs on here the thing that you notice is that the last element because of the way that this function works where it's building things up our p starts off as empty we take the first element and test that so we wind up starting everything that ends in a one here first and then everything ends in a two and then everything ends in a three and you can see that here as well everything ends in a one we're trying first and then for all those attempts we tried the twos the threes the fours for the twos we tried three and four etc okay so this generates all the permutations of, of our list and it's interesting to try to picture what is going on here with the recursion this is definitely branching recursion because it is actually and it's branching with a rather high branching factor however many elements there are in our list the first time through that's how many recursive calls we have because this while loop is walking through every element of our original list so if we were to draw the branching tree for the one two three we would have our original call with one two three and that would branch out and call itself three separate times and then each of those would have two numbers left so they would branch out twice and then the last call just calls itself once here we would have had branching four times at the first level three times at the second level two times at the one level or at, at the neck at the lower level and you can see as you keep going there basically the top level branching factor is growing by one each time and the total number of calls grows as the factorial of the number of elements that are in our list